is Jane Lowe and I'm at Black Hat Asia 2023 and with me today I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Sandro Pinto who is a professor with the University of Minho exactly. and uh, Cristiano Rodriguez who is also with the universities and they are going to be sharing with us on side channel attacks on microprocessors. So thank you so much. Microcontrollers. So thank you for correcting me there. So um, thank you very much for your time today. Yeah, thank you, Jane, for taking the time to basically interview us or to spend uh, a few words with us. Yes, um, so uh, yes, you corrected me earlier, the <laughs> difference between microprocessors and microcontrollers. So I'm going to be asking you about what is the difference between those and also obviously about... Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the key observation here is that um, all the majority of the side channels attacks that we know, for example, the most well known in the last few years is Spectre and Meltdown. Uh, in particular, these, those are micro-architectural side channels because side channels in general is quite broad. Uh, is that they target microprocessors or also so-called application processors units that are the CPUs or the computing units that power cloud infrastructures, servers, desktops, laptops, mobile device. What we have done was we went to the completely opposite side of the computing spectrum. And instead of these high performance powerful CPUs, we target the very teeny tiny uh, small uh, CPUs or microcontroller units that goes inside these embedded or IoT device. Oh, right. Okay. That's the, the big difference. They are typically very resource constrained in terms of computing power, but also in terms of memory and power consumption. Now, I'm going to ask you what is a side channel type, but before we go on to that, so you talk about uh, microcontrollers in IoT devices. So, for example, we will be seeing some of them, say, in our mobile phones, yes? Uh, exactly. In, in, in the mobile phones, you have typically microprocessors plus microcontrollers. Okay. Uh, but typically, for example, where you have microcontrollers in some smartwatch, right. for example, okay. at your home when you have these IoT home appliance, right, right. you have on your uh, washing machine, uh, probably Alexa, and right. all of that stuff okay. is, is where you have these microcontroller units. All right, okay, so thanks for uh, giving us a brief <laughs> introduction into the difference between a microcontroller and a microprocessor. So now I'm going to ask you, what is a side channel attack? Yeah, side channel attack is not a new concept at all. I mean, side channels have been here for quite a long time. If you go to Google Scholar and you put side channel attack, you'll find more than one million entries about papers and related literature. Uh, the particular thing about side channel attacks is that is a technique that allows attackers uh, to retrieve secrets used in computations basically by observing uh, the, the side effects that those computations have in specific physical properties and the environment. For example, uh, there are different side channels. Some can be related to sun trays, uh, others can be related to heat and power, others can be related to e electromagnetic radiation, and others can be related to timing. So really by detecting the differences in, say, the temperature? One is, for example, one attack that where uh, the, the attackers or the hackers or the researchers uh, basically leverage uh, thermal cameras to basically observe uh, thermal trays. Right. So they basically Having thermal cameras, when we press the keys or do a pattern like to unlock the phone, they can analyze those images and recognize the patterns, and they can understand which, which patterns they, people use to basically unlock their mobile device. Oh, right. So basically from uh, detecting differences in temperature, exactly. they can reverse engineer the, that's, that's the secret. Is, yeah, that's, that's is all One about. One example. Yeah, right. side channel okay. attacks, and then for example, Spectre and Meltdown, uh, they basically leverage the micro architecture of a microprocessor mm -hmm. or application unit to detect timing difference to mm -hmm. then retrieve the secrets. It's not a direct way, but, but an indirect way mm -hmm. of, of retrieving the secrets. Yeah, I'm sh I, 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 um, yes, there's a lot, like you say, a lot of uh, material out there on side channel attacks. Uh, One million, you say, in yeah. Google Scholar. And I think on Spectre and Meltdown, there's quite a lot as well on exactly, well, on a few, I guess, methods, how uh, these attacks can uh, manifest. Um, so uh, talking about 
your research then? So it's also side channel, but on a microcontroller. Yeah, uh, our, our to be to limit clearly the scope of our attack and work is that we we, we implement micro architectural side channels, which is we explore uh, things related to the micro architecture of a computer. Uh, but instead of focusing on these big microprocessors like Spectrum, Melton, that they have very complex microarchitecture, so there is a lot of meat to digest, to explore. In these small microcontrollers, you don't typically have those features. They are very teeny tiny, they don't have complex microarchitecture. And the, the beauty of our work is that people Typically, people think that because they are very simple, they will be not subject That's to, right. exactly. to microarchitecture yeah. side channels. But we proved exactly the opposite. And the, the beauty or the, the very interesting part of our work is that we took that challenge. Okay, people have a common assumption is that they are simple, they are not subject to these attacks. So we decided to look deeper, mm -hmm. and we basically found uh, a microarchitectural element it. that we can explore to basically retrieve secrets in MCUs. And so now you, you test out your hypothesis on a smart key lock. Exactly. Is that right? Yeah. So tell us about that. I will let uh, Christian uh, speak a little yeah, bit about, about that. that. <laughs> so for our use case, we use uh, the smart lock application. And the main goal of this kind of uh, device it's just to when you insert a pin, they unlock something. Right. Yeah. It can, so can like be the entrance to a house, for example. Yeah, exactly. It can be a house, can be a security vault, something. And typical, these devices are powered by these microcontrollers, these tiny devices. So our main goal here to prove our attack is to get the secret pin that some people will introduce, and we have some malicious code running on that device that indirectly, without the system detect it, we can steal the secret using this, this new channel that we create applying to microcontrollers. So you, uh, was it a timing? Uh, uh, yeah, timing attack? side channel, yeah. yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. So tell us about some of these challenges. Is it something that, you know, after I see your talk, right, is it something that I can go home and do it myself? I mean, what we did was in a very controlled environment. Uh, and, and basically, uh, to uh, scale the attack to uh, infield, uh, it will require some steps. Because uh, the way we, we mount the attack, uh, it's highly dependent on the trusted application that interface with the trusted keypad. So if that application is written in a different way, uh, we need to have access to that application first to understand how it is written so that we can reconstruct uh, all, all the So pattern. you need access to the code behind that? Yeah, exactly. Okay. For, now, for now, at the moment, uh, yeah, we, we need first to at least see the code yes. so that we can okay. mount the attack. Right. But we are now working in something to be more practical and scalable in that sense, which means that uh, we are trying now to to mount the attack in a very different way so that we don't necessarily need to oh, wow. basically... Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that, that's the next step. So, so you say that you need uh, access to the code. And I guess um, for site channel attacks, I think the other um, argument that m many people bring up is you have to be close to the device. So it's not something that you can do remotely, is it? So I cannot sit you know, in, at home and copy your, your technique and, and, and exploit some some yeah. smart lock <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of my neighbors, right? The point is that now s the, the beauty uh, about that is that there are some uh, a class of side channel attacks that are software based mm -hmm. and typically they can be also remote. Mm -hmm. uh, what we did was not nothing remote because also in MCU device uh, the remote part uh, is not as in a computer, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, the connections are, right. are very limited, low bandwidth and all of that stuff, but we believe that uh, it will be possible to, to once mm. you have the option of, wow. for example, uh, updating one part of the untrusted part of your system, uh, it would be possible to, to mount such, such kind of attack. But as I said, we just did the, 
the ground, the base ground, mm. and we are now exploring uh, some levels at top. Right, you and it requires time. Yeah, more, yeah, it's always like that. You exactly. start from the ground, and That's now right. you understand what you can do. Now you need to build uh, a top. And of course, uh, some of these uh, microcontrollers, I'm just speculating here, they will have some defenses that kick in, you know, once you, I guess, try to guess the secret after a few times, no? So you really don't have many chances to guess the secret. That's the beauty of, uh, of our current uh, attack, is that we detect in real time. I mean, at the time that you press the pin, we just have one chance. You, you just, I mean, typically in Spectre and Meltdown, they execute several rounds to get the secret. That's right. That was another challenge that we had. We don't have many, I mean, the pin can be pressed uh, once in a month. You don't Correct. know. You don't know. That's right. Uh, so the, the good part is that we detect in real time. First time you go, you put your pin, we get the pin. That's why we need to get first, we need to understand first what code is running as a trusted application. Mm -hmm. and, but once we know what is the code that runs there, we can uh, basically detect in real time without mm -hmm. accessing to the trust part, without nothing. But it's just one try. You press the pin, you get the pin. Right, okay. <laughs> right, sounds like uh, you, you have a, a, a lot of uh, plans. Um, to make it more sophisticated, to make it remote, to extend it to different types of, I guess, uh, microcontrollers as well? Yeah, I can comment on that because, yeah, uh, changing from microcontroller to microcontroller requires some adaptation. And as Cristiano said, uh, we start with uh, two, MC, two microcontrollers just, and we took the state-of-the-art microcontrollers. I mean, it's the microcontrollers that are built with trust on M, which is a kind of security technology to basically allow some parts to be on the secure side and, no, and mm -hmm. other parts on the non-secure side. And we can basically bypass all of those technologies. Uh, we mm. can, and we prove that in these, in these MCUs, which are the state-of-the-art. Mo most of them are not still available on the market. Uh, and yeah, basically, it, but at the same time, we try to prove that it can scale across the full spectrum of the mm -hmm. MCUs. And that we also test other, other MCUs and other platforms. But every time you test in another MCU, you need to basically uh, contact the MCU vendor to let them know that there is a potential vulnerability. Right. So this takes a lot of time and uh, it takes a lot of iteration. Like, uh, yeah, it's not, I mean, to mount the attack was, one year and something. And, that, and this, the, the process of responsible disclosure that we start uh, with the affected parties, mm -hmm. uh, we, we just start with one MCU vendor. And now we are scaling to other MCUs, mm -hmm. but this takes time. Iterating with them, demonstrating with them, proving with them in, in their MCUs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a lot of work to do. Right, so uh, I was going to ask you how concerning is this, right, your finding? And you mentioned earlier that there's a possibility to uh, extend this uh, sort of a physical um, side channel approach to a more remote uh, one, which I can see that the impact will be quite uh, cons widespread and yeah, concerning. Uh, I think but the concern, uh, sorry, please. Yes, yeah. No, no. <laughs> no. I think the concern at the moment is, is medium, let's say like that. Mm. It is possible under certain conditions to mount. Uh, but what worries uh, the most for us, and that's the awareness that we are trying to, to, yeah, to share with the affected parties, and that they are starting now trying to, to understand, or uh, starting now accepting, uh, but we are still in discussions. This is not uh, a, a thing that you approach to them. They recognize, okay, no, when is this sort of attacks like Spectre and Meltdown? In the beginning, Intel was quite reluctant. Uh, and they said, OK, it's out of the trend model, it's out of this. And then they need to prove that more level mm, of sophistication I to see. prove that is a real uh, right. um, mm -hmm. yeah, dangers. Uh, and here is the same. I mean, and they are starting, OK, and now they want to talk with us. So in the beginning, they just were just replying to emails. Now they are setting calls to, to talk with oh, us. All right, OK. <laughs> so what do you think are the lessons that vendors or you know, people or users who are buying these products, what, what are the lessons that we should take away from, from this? Uh, the first big lesson is that the, the common assumption that uh, these microcontrollers are simple and will mm. not, not be subject to these sort of attacks 
is, is, is wrong. not true. It's not it's true. wrong. We prove and we prove that uh, with with our attack. So, what is your advice then to uh, uh, consumers like myself who might have uh, you know? Uh, have have concerns after listening to the talk. What should we do? Yeah, at the moment, I think uh, you should be yeah uh, following what these um, these manufacturers that mm. use these microcontrollers uh, recommend to you. Because yeah, we are following up with the different affected parties. Mm. Uh, they will get. They are getting awareness for that, and they will, and they will implement. We have work. some ideas how to implement some countermeasures to minimize. All right. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, we are in talks with them. So the uh, thing for consumers is really just to uh, look out for any advisory that will be coming out from the manufacturers yeah. as a result of this. Yeah. So there's nothing really we should uh, be uh, doing, uh, opening up our uh, key lock and <laughs> exactly. exploring the microcontrollers. Okay, right. Oh, that's very interesting. So thank you very much, uh, Sandro, and thank you, Cristiano, for your time today to share with us on side channel attacks and how it, they might uh, impact microcontrollers. Thank you very much. For thank your you time. very much once again for your time.